When the world is focusing towards EVs so often these days, it's nice to have a car that's designed for the WRC that ends up usable on the road. Meet the Toyota Yaris GR. There's only a few things that it actually has in common with the Yaris. The headlights, the wing mirrors, and the rear lights on the back. Everything else is totally different. These sills run neatly into these massively flared wheel arches. The back then has a spoiler. Not exactly as big as the WRC car, but not bad by Yaris standards. The GR is also light. It comes in at just under 1300 kilograms, which by today's standards, with all the technology and gadgets and safety tech that you need in a car, is pretty good. And the way they've got that weight down is by doing things like using very soft plastic. It's all well and good that the Aris GR can dart down a country lane almost sideways, but is it practical as a hatch? Well, boots all right. But in a 50,000 euro Yaris, it's not really important what you can fit in the boot. Sticking with that practicality, there is room for two in the back and you will actually get child seats in there. But let's check out the front instead. So you spend 49, nearly 50,000 euro on the Toyota Yaris. What are you getting for your money? Well, these bucket seats are very, very comfortable and they're well bolstered around the side. And that headrest even feels like it's got extra padding for whatever. Now there's loads of tech in the car because it's a modern car. It has to have things like lane departure and collision avoidance. And it'll flash once you go over the speed limit that the current road you're on is in so it can read cameras. Not much use in a car with this much power, but at least it's trying. A bit of Alcantara on this steering wheel might add to it but it's kind of basic enough on the inside. There's no heated seats to stave weight. Why would you want fancy things like that? Uh, you do get CarPlay in all Toyotas now and Android, so they're there and you can connect to the USB audio options through a cable. If you get the more expensive packs in the car, you don't get sat-nav. That doesn't make sense. But on the standard car, you do. And those packs don't exactly come cheap. This central area with the floating tablet and the rear view mirror actually takes up quite a bit of space. So some people have criticized it for that. You can flick between track and sport mode in here, which converts how much power is going to the rear versus the front of the car. On track mode, you get 50-50, and in uh, sport mode, you'll get 70 the rear wheels and 30 to the front. And the gear stick sits 10 millimeters higher than a standard Yaris, so it's just easier to grab when you're having a bit of a dice. That's the thing about the Yaris, it's incredibly forgiving. You can absolutely nail it into corners, uh, perhaps with you know a confidence that maybe as a driver you shouldn't really have, but and the brakes, I mean, this is the standard car. Obviously, if you pay more, you're gonna get a limited slip differential, you'll get the red calipers more lightweight alloys that save about 30 kilograms but the real test in a car like this in my opinion and i've seen it in other hatches where it's very forgiving and there's two sides of it you either want it so raw that it it's bordering on you know dangerous depending on what lunatics behind the wheel or you have a car like this that is overall quite controllable has plenty of power tons of grip and in the wrong hands it's not going to end up in a ditch and that's that's the way i'd sum up the aris's capabilities on the road pretty much any idiot can get behind the wheel of this and have fun but not dangerously and i hope 
that makes sense in what I'm in what I'm describing. It'll match your revs when you're changing gear. You just flick on a button down here called IMT and the revs are nicely matched. It's quite noisy, particularly at motorway speeds, 120 kilometers per hour, you can hear everything. It's that kind of car that you're kind of buying it for those reasons. It's almost an inconvenience having to listen to it. If if you're on a motorway where you know these are the type of roads that you really are craving the Yaris to be on. It's just so right into a corner. It's so, so capable. And then the safety in it, it will spot pedestrians up ahead. It's got collision avoidance. So all the, the modern things that you're kind of looking for in a car that keeps you out of trouble. Now, then you can, you know, calm it down and it turns into quite a calm car. It's not poppy and banging out of the exhaust pipe. It won't necessarily have people tutting at you as you drive by, which is so often the case in things like the Honda Civic Type R and the i30N. From high and I, it's just incredible fun. That, I mean, the roads are wet here. Uh, it's it's what it's eight degrees, so you know slippiness isn't really something to take into consideration. But it, it is wet, and this thing is just so glued to the road. It's just incredibly capable, as I said, for the average driver. The driver's seat you can't raise up how high it is or drop it a bit lower, and then the passenger seat actually kind of sits high up for the same reason and every time you need to get something out of the back not probably going to be a human because there's just so little space you've got to readjust your seat every time because the way it opens that kind of a bit annoying as soon as you get a gap though it's just it's incredibly fun even the standard brakes do the job as far as I'm concerned. I obviously don't have the other ones to compare it to. Criticism I have, is, although it's not, it's not the car's fault, driving it around, anybody who's bought a turbo badge in the back of their car or put an aftermarket exhaust wants to have a go. And if you're not in the mood or it's just not safe to do so, there's it draws attention, there is no doubt about that. The way first gear is set up at lower speeds, it's actually quite easy to either stall it or almost stall it. It's, it's a weird, I mean, you'll get used to it, it's just quite a high bite point on the clutch. So first few times, it's like as if you're not giving it enough power. This is in sport mode at the moment, so there's 30% power to the front, 70% to the rear wheels, and that nervousness you might get on a wet day in a rear wheel drive car simply isn't there. <laughs> it's just such a free revving car, and so much fun to just take off then onto a country road, take it off the beaten track and have a bit more fun. If you're in any doubt as to whether this would be a car for you, I mean even going over a little crest there you just feel what it must be like to be a rally driver in a car like this competing it's it's uh, just incredible how forgiving it is if there's any inkling in your head that you want one of these cars it's not going to be for everybody due to the price a lot of people are going to go you spent how much on a toyota yaris but it's so much more than a toyota yaris this car really is a case of if you know you know and for everyone else they don't matter
unbelievable fun. Unbelievable. Thank you very much for watching this review of the Yaris GR. If you're interested in more videos, hit subscribe on the channel. They're making 25,000 of these. How many will make their way to Ireland? I don't know, but if you do get a chance to pick one up, or if you take them for a spin, you've got to do it. <sighs> that was a blast. Thank you very much to the lads in Sandyford Toyota. Check them out, they're just obviously off the M50. If you're looking for a Yaris GR or any type of Toyota, uh, they would love to hear from you. And I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.